Hand cut dovetails are a hallmark of fine furniture and they don't have to be that hard to create. These David Barron magnetic guides make them a breeze. Let's take a look. These magnetic dovetail guides are just awesome for making hand cut dovetails because they hold the saw in the exact position for making your cuts in both the tail and the pin board so there's nothing to chisel away on all those sidewall cuts. The way it works is that there's a magnet in the side of the jig that holds your saw in the exact right position for making each of the cuts. Now these um, magnetic guides come in a variety of angles for different dovetails from 1 in 4, 1 in 5, all the way 1 in 6, 7, and 8. So you can use them for different types of wood or whatever um, kind of pattern that you like. There's even a 90 degree uh, that you can use for making shoulders on your tailboards or for other operations. And there's a 45 degree saw guide that can be used for miters, picture frames, etc. Now the way it works is that there's that magnet on both sides that holds the saw perfectly in place. On top of that magnet is actually a little non-friction skid pad making it super slippery so that your saw has really nice action as you make a cut. Also on each of the guides is a friction surface on the inside so that when you hold this up to the workpiece, it's not going to go anywhere. It's going to stay exactly where you want it as you make that cut. So let's go ahead and make some dovetails. For cutting my dovetails today, I'm using this Japanese saw from Gaiyukucho, uh, as recommended by David Barron, the maker of these guides. Uh, it's a beautiful Japanese saw with really fine set teeth that makes awesome accurate cuts. I've already marked my tail and pin board and I'm going to go ahead and start with the tails today. So I'll pop that in the vise and I've marked the top of my board where I want to cut those tails. Now I'm going to grab the 1 in 6 magnetic guide and put it on top of the workpiece. Now it goes on top like this, not in the front, but on top. So the magnet is above the workpiece and that's important obviously to grab your saw. So I'm gonna go ahead, let the magnet grab the saw, line it up right on my mark and go ahead and just saw down to the line. Now I let the saw do the work, make sure I'm good front and back, and I'm going to go ahead and move it over. I'm going to stay on the right hand side of the guide because I'm right handed uh, and cut the next slope. Uh, it's going to be the other tail, but I'm going to use the same slope here on the right hand side of the guide. And just go ahead, let the guide guide the saw and simply saw straight down until I get to my mark. Now I'm going to flip the tailboard over because I want to continue working from the right hand side since I'm right handed. So flip the board over, use the same side of the jig on top, let the magnet grab the saw and guide it down. And move it over and my last cut. And there's my tailboard, the four cuts. Now I just got to cut off the shoulders. So I'll turn that sideways. And here you can use, you can of course cut straight up and down, uh, or you can grab the 90 degree magnetic guide, put that right on top and let that do the guiding for you. So put it on top, get it right to the waist side of my mark and cut straight up and down. flip it around to the other side then I simply have to clear out the waste in between the two tails Waste cleared out of my tailboard. Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer it over to the pin board. So go ahead and pop the pin board into the vise. Grab marking knife, 
set it up right on top where I want and mark those pins now I like to mark where the waist is going to be so I cut to the correct side of the line cutting out those tails and leaving the pins grab my one and six again the exact same guide I was just using this time I'm going to flip it around to get the correct angle. Again, the guide goes on top, so the magnet is above the workpiece, and line it up so that my saw is cutting on the waist side of my marking line. So I just want to snug right up to that marking line, make sure I'm on the waist side, and let the magnet guide the saw so I'm all the way down to my line. Go ahead and move it over. Make sure the angle is lining up correctly. Again, on the waist side. And go ahead and cut to the waist side at the correct angle with the saw straight up and down. Down to my marked line. Go ahead and flip the board around because I want to stay on the right hand side. I'm going to use the same side of my guide. Now, this time the guide goes on the back side so I'm holding it towards me and again this all is really straightforward when you see your line make sure that the angle you know is the correct angle but make sure you're on the waist side so that's why I like to mark that just snug it up just to the waist side of my marked line and cut straight down move it over last one So now I just need to cut out the waist. Before I do that, I'm gonna turn it back around so I have the show side facing me in case there's any errant cut. I'm looking at the show face. Go ahead and bring my coping saw down and cut out that waist. And the other one. All right, just need to pare down to the line and see how we did. All right, moment of truth. Let's check it out. All right, pretty good. Let's check it out. That is pretty tight straight off the saw a little bit of a errant cut went a little too deep right there that little mark and same on the other side right there that's from my saw going too deep but check out straight off the saw between the tails and pins and on this side between the tails and pins no gaps nice and tight perfect joint so you can see just how fast, easy, and accurate that is. The reason for the accuracy is because it lines up the saw exactly where you need it and makes a perfectly straight at the correct angle cut so there's no pairing with your chisel or a way to accidentally overcut or anything like that and you get dead on accuracy for each of those saw blade cuts. Here's the whole range of different size that you can get from a one in four all the way through to a one in eight. So you can get that whole collection. There's even uh, the 90 degree, which I use for the shoulder cut. Now, of course, for shoulder cuts, you could just go straight up and down without a guide, but the 90 degree is pretty handy for making sure you're dead on up and down. Let me go ahead and tell you a few more tips and points for using this magnetic jig. One of the first things you might notice about using this magnetic dovetail guide is it's going to reduce the overall depth of cut that you can make for your dovetails. Because the guide sits on top of the work and the saw comes up to it here, I can cut down all the way until the back of the saw hits the top of the jig. Once it hits the top of the jig, I can't cut any further down. Now with this nice Japanese saw which cuts beautifully, that's maybe over an inch. So I think we're gonna be pretty good for most any dovetail you wanna be cutting. Now the second thing 
Does this work with Western saws? Absolutely, this is one of my favorite dovetail saws, Lee Nielsen saw, and I can hold the guide up, bring it right up, catches, and go ahead and cut my dovetails. Now I'm gonna have the same issue here that it's going to hit the back of my saw and I won't be able to cut any further. So with this small Western dovetail saw, I get three quarters of an inch or so. Again, pretty good for any type of dovetail, but if you're doing big case work, maybe you want bigger dovetails than that. Again, you could start it with the guide. Okay, now I've got a really three quarter inch or so kerf. I can take the guide away and now I can use that kerf and continue that saw all the way to the back until I hit the back of my saw and I can get a really deep cut. The kerf guides the saw beautifully, so that's gonna work great as well. To be specific, this guide takes away one and one eighth inch from your depth of cut. So go ahead and check your favorite saw to make sure it's gonna work for you. As you saw in making the dovetails, the jig is reversible, so I can use both sides of the jig. Now for making tails or for making the pins, of course with the tails, I like to cut on the right hand side because I'm right handed. And rather than using the left hand side, that's gonna be pretty awkward for me to try to hold this and cut. I go ahead and turn the board around and use the other side. But just be aware when you do that, that you don't want to, you want to make sure that you've marked the top of the board, okay? If you mark the face of the board with where your dovetails are gonna go and you turn it around, you no longer have those lines to work from. It is very easy to hold this guide right against the workpiece and it does not move. Uh, that friction pad uh, actually works beautifully, <laughs> more beautifully than I would have even thought or imagined. Um, it holds it right in place. But of course, if you want to, you can use a small spring clamp or a small clamp to hold this in place while you're making your cut. Easily just clamp it on and then there you go. Grab your saw and you can make your cut. No problem. Now on the edge of the guide are the frictionless pads. These are gonna get a little worn as your saw is going back and forth and hits it or whatever. It's still gonna work beautifully, don't worry about it. Uh, there are included a couple extra ones if you do wanna replace these, and of course you can always order more. And finally, tails or pins first, doesn't matter. These guides will work in either case. Dovetails are a fundamental part of woodworking used in just a variety of projects. Now, of course, there are powered ways of making dovetails, but unless you're batching out a lot of the same dovetails, it's gonna be a lot faster to do them by hand. These magnetic guides help make that process really enjoyable by making it fast and easy and accurate, and you're gonna be really happy with the results. <music>